President Biden has been in Raleigh today. Air Force One landed in about the last 90 minutes. He held a news conference to talk about the damage in Western North Carolina and the federal response. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Laura Leslie tells us what the president had to say. Despite the president's visit, the mood was pretty grim today here at the State Emergency Operations Center. In the Situation Room, the room was overflowing with first responders, National Guard members, military officials, all here to brief President Joe Biden on the status of rescue and relief efforts in Western North Carolina and to hear what other help they can expect. Biden thanked those who have been working nonstop in very difficult conditions. According to State Emergency Director Will Ray, about 1,600 state and federal responders are already on the ground in the affected areas. Biden said active military will now be helping as well. Starting today, they're going to spend, they're going to speed up the delivery of life-saving supplies like food, water, medicines to isolated communities for over what the Pentagon calls the last tactical mile. We did not have the opportunity today to ask questions, but I have asked both the White House and the governor's office why it took so long for this step to happen, especially in a state with so many active military members just a few hours away. We'll update you when they respond. Laura Leslie, WRL News, Raleigh. We mentioned at least 89 people in North Carolina have died from this storm. The victims are as old as 89, as young as four years old. Many drowned or got caught in landslides. Others were hit by fallen trees or in car crashes on wet roads. DHHS says at least two died, quote, as a result of a lack of basic necessities. In other words, the storm trapped them. They didn't have any power, food, water, possibly not even shelter. They didn't have a way to call for help either. And, and how awful is that? This, this inability to connect to the outside world, particularly at this level, is pretty unique to this disaster. Even after Hurricane Florence, 85% of cell sites held strong, not this time. Many people who made it through Helene's wind and rain and floodwaters, people who should survive, are still in danger because they can't contact anyone. Canton is among one of the towns where this has really taken hold. These are pictures of the flooding there this week. The town's mayor says the lack of cell service is unacceptable. What we have experienced, in my opinion, is an unacceptable and disgraceful breakdown of cellular technology. This is 2024, and we are having to deal with this crisis with 1990s technology, um, and this is unexcusable. The mayor was able to talk to us using Starlink. That's a, a satellite internet service owned by Elon Musk. He and other companies are trying to help in all of this. This afternoon, Musk tweeted, Starlink terminals will now work automatically without need for payment in the areas affected by Hurricane Helene. T-Mobile brought in several mobile satellite trucks to Buncombe, Henderson, and Cherokee counties. They provide cell service and Wi-Fi regardless of what cell phone plan you have. Verizon did the same, deploying 20 mobile satellite light units with 21 more on the way. Local companies have some solutions as well. Solistic, that's a company based in Durham, they're bringing mobile cell phone towers to Western North Carolina. People that would normally help in a situation like this are having a really hard time lo with logistics. Connectivity has woven itself into our everyday lives and is an essential part of our lives. He's right. It is essential. We rely so much on these, on our phones, on the Internet, on the cell service that we use. When that goes away, what do we do? For many in the mountains, the, the only place to turn was the radio. Not Internet radio, not a podcast. Over the air, tried and true, AM, FM radio. Those stations have been broadcasting information nonstop. I spoke to Laura Lee, a news director at Blue Ridge Public Radio. She told me that her station and others like it have become a literal lifeline. We've been heartened and um, encouraged to know that people are uh, uh, using this information. You know, we've gotten reports that people use crank radios and their whole neighborhood gathers at 10 and 4 because they know that's when they're going to get that information um, to know that you know, the work that we're doing is helping get information out to people um, is the most fulfilling part. People haven't just been gathering around their radios. They've been gathering in the middle of town, getting information the only way they can. These are pictures from Black Mountain and Marshall, a crowd of people gathering to get the latest updates on the storm and the recovery efforts because they don't have access to phone service or the Internet. And it really makes you think, doesn't it? 
I've been thinking a lot about it, our, our reliance on these things, on our phones, how so much of my connection to everyone and everything lives inside of it. It's, uh, I've been imagining that story you just heard from Laura Lee with the, with the radio about people uh, gathering around those crank, crank radios. And I think maybe I should get one of those <laughs> crank radios. It's why we're gonna keep telling these stories and why we will continue to stay on every angle, including this one of this emergency.